I'm Suzanne Rogers, certified fitness instructor, presenter, trainer, and wellness enthusiast. And I'm Greg Ritter, licensed real estate agent and professional chef. We are a recently married couple with a blended family. We invite you to spend a few minutes with us each week as we share our unique perspective on health, home life, and personal growth. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. This week on segment one, our health segment, we're going to talk about exercise. Yeah! <laughs> All right. So did a little fact checking and according to the Center for Disease Control, about 80% of all people do not get enough exercise weekly. It should be 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. I did the math. Yep. I know it's a little scary coming from me, but <laughs> that works out to about 21.4 minutes a day. Does not seem like a lot. It was not as daunting as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And I'm, for the most part, I think I get that. Yes. Um, mainly because of walking my dog and mm -hmm. teaching spin class. Right. How right. about you? I do not get that. And I think that's partly because I've been doing two jobs lately. But I did want to bring up the fact that, and I don't think many people know me as this, but I once weighed, not too, too long ago, about six years ago, I once weighed 320 pounds. And it was through, mainly through, weightlifting, resistance weight training that I lost a hundred pounds. That's amazing. And I've seen pictures. I didn't know you at that weight. Or I haven't mm -hmm. known you at that weight. So um, I was amazed that that was, that's part of your yep. story yep. Um, and that you have um, dedicated yourself to your health. But I was also surprised to learn that weightlifting mm -hmm. could be a weight loss tool. Yes. Yes. The, um, a lot of people think when you're lifting weights, you're going to bulk up, but it takes a long time to do that. It's something akin to being afraid of, of getting bulky lifting weights is kind of like being afraid of going to college and accidentally getting a PhD. It takes a long time. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. No. If you want to bulk up, you can, but it takes a lot of hard, uh, uh, discerned effort. So, but you're, your path has been very different from the weight resistance path. Is that right? Very different. I am obsessed and love with spin. Mm -hmm. Indoor cycling is my jam these days. Uh, we both love to cycle outdoors, yep. but yep, unfortunately we time weather doesn't always permit, but um, I can get my jam on in spin class and um I like to debunk the myths about it because a lot of people think it's much harder than it is. Yes. I've heard that many times that, you know, yeah, you don't even want to get into a spin studio because it's, it's going to kill you. Well, and I think there are programs that might teach at that level, mm -hmm. but I don't know that that's proper spin. The yeah. spin I teach, mm -hmm. anybody can get on a bike and pedal and add resistance and occasionally mm -hmm. stand up and sit down. And that's the essence of spin class. Mm -hmm. um, listen to some great music and um, get your heart rate up, get a good sweat on. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, if I remember correctly from when, when you first started it, the spin system is supposed to replicate to some extent. Outdoor cycling. So mm -hmm. if you can't do it on a bike outside, you shouldn't be doing it on a bike inside yeah. because it's probably not safe. Barbell stands. Yeah. A friend of ours, mm -hmm. we were at a party last week and a friend I hadn't seen in a while said that she was afraid to do spin because an instructor told her she had to do a four minute plank uh, before she would be able to take his class. I don't Which understand that. Absolutely crazy mm -hmm. that she would need to be expected to hover over the handlebars mm -hmm. for up to four minutes. Right. Very few people, maybe tour de France level yeah. riding. Would you, Maybe need to do yeah, that. I have, yeah, I can't imagine. I can't. Mm -hmm. So we've got very different workout routines that work for us. Weightlifting versus spin. I also like bar class, which I'm going to be soon certified in. Um, walking our dog is a big one. Hiking. We love to hike. Yes, we're hikers. Um, yes, when we the hike. weather permits, we love to get outside. So Off-leash dog park yeah. is always fun. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what are some of your favorite activities? What keeps you engaged? I've got to mix it up do different things or I, I won't stick to that, even hit that 20 minutes a day. I could go in and just deadlift 
for an entire month and I would be okay with that. Straight? What do you mean a month? Yeah. No, I mean <laughs> like the whole month do no other exercise but deadlift. But Walk it in. doesn't take very long per day, does it? It does not. I, you can probably get in and really stress yourself in about 30 minutes. And actually a good spin class can mm -hmm. be as little as 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool down, warm up the whole thing and you've got a, a great workout. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't do kettlebells, although I know some friends that do it. I'm curious to see if any listeners do kettlebells and what's the one it's called a Turkish get up. I don't know this one. Oh, look it up on the line on the line. Okay. Yeah. There's my homework. Yeah. Well, again, what's your inspiration? What keeps you moving? Let us know. All right. We would love to hear from you. This week in our home segment, we're going to talk about smart home voice assistants. That's tough to say, isn't it? Why don't you start <laughs> us off by talking, tell us what is a smart home voice assistant? So the big three are, and I hope I don't set any of them off. Siri, Alexa, and Google Home. According to uh, some super savvy internet research that I did, 50% of people use a voice, assist a voice assistant in 2017. So that's on their phone a or what? anything. Versus assistant. <laughs> and, How many? 50%. Uh, that's a lot. And then no way. Why are we having a segment on this? Um, it's old news. Well, because we love it. <laughs> That's <Okay>. why. <laughs> and then 25% have a speaker in their home, a voice assistant speaker in their home. So 75% of all people don't have this experience. That's why we're doing it, sweetheart. Oh, okay. This has been something that's super fun for us, I think. We were we were all trepidatious about getting one, weren't we? In the home especially. I've been dependent on Siri for a while. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it didn't go off either. Mm -hmm. um, and also voice text is something I'm very dependent on. Yeah. Um, but then getting them in the home seemed a little invasive. <gasps> mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, I've heard lots of people, you know, they're trepidatious about having another microphone, but you know what? There's a microphone in our phones, in our laptops, in our, just everywhere, all over the house. So, uh, and know, obviously we want to be heard. We do. Because here we are. Yeah, we, we're here and we actually <laughs> bought an extra big microphone <laughs> <laughs> that we're talking into right now. So yeah, we, we um, have one assistant downstairs, a different type upstairs mm -hmm. and for Christmas, we got a lot of the smart lights and plugs. Right. Mm -hmm. So now I don't think I can actually turn some of the lights off with my hands anymore. Oh, it would be very difficult. It would be. I don't know how I'd go to bed at night. But it's pretty, it, you know, that there's, I think, more complicated ways of putting these things together. But mostly what we, what we have just works off apps. We don't need any kind of hub or anything like that. We just... Tell it to turn the lights on and it turns the lights on. That's one feature we're, we've been using. But what's been the most appealing for me is um, like during dinner time, mm -hmm. playing trivia games with yes. the family. Mm -hmm. And it's been an amazing way to bring our uh, blended family together mm -hmm. since we have a wide age range between our kids. Right. It's mm -hmm. actually been really cool to, to and unifying to mm -hmm. play games with the voice activated system super fun to play the games have we've really enjoyed that aspect of it but also things like it's hot in the middle of the night and rather than having to get up and go <laughs> change the temperature you can just tell tell the voice assistant to do it for you from the bed high level problem yeah it's super nice um and what's the other thing oh the Ring doorbell. That's been fun as well. That's been mm -hmm. really good. Um, a little more invasive because it does actually take a video and, of who's at the door. And audio. Yep. But super useful. And I don't know if somebody were to steal something off our porch, if we mm -hmm. could do anything about it. But it is nice to have that added measure of security. Uh, uh, also, 
having a shopping list and just saying, hey, add thus and such to the shopping list. And then when you get to the store, it's right there on your phone. Not to mention just the weather. Yeah. Asking what the weather is because right. I couldn't possibly just yeah. look out the window or step out the door. Right. How long is it going to take to get to work <laughs> while you're brushing your teeth? That's kind of fun. It's It's been a lot of fun. Now, I stopped short of the in-home cameras. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to go that far yet, but I think you've mentioned you want that. Yeah. Um, yes. Mostly at this point, just because I'm curious about it. I don't know how useful they would be. Um, well, we don't have strangers coming in the house very often, so I don't know. I don't think we'd need a nanny cam or anything like no. that. I think, you know, maybe next level stuff is they're going to start allowing people to uh, like leave your Amazon packages inside. And if you've got a smart lock for your door, you can grant them access. And then if you've got a camera inside, you can, mm -hmm. you can make sure that they didn't do anything nefarious while they're inside. But you know, all well, that's kind of down the road. We have a good friend who mm -hmm. uses the smart locks, which mm -hmm. I think is amazing. That would be mm -hmm. my next step is to get the smart locks where we can grant those codes for mm -hmm. ourselves or somebody we're house sitting or pet mm -hmm. sitting, right. uh, mm -hmm. give them a code and they would deactivate once they're done using it. Right. Or to somebody have comes in, mm -hmm. right. Somebody comes in to do drywall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would be fun. Drywall. That's pretty specific. Because somebody's coming to look at drywall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next week. That's why we don't have we don't have the smart locks. So yep. somebody has to be here. Have to be here in person. Well, let us know if you're using any home devices. Uh, we feel like we're kind of late to the game on some of this. Mm -hmm. So let us know if you have a, a fun activity you do or security measures you like to use. Yeah. Tell Alexa that you're her father. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. All right. Hit us back. Okay. So in segment three, we do talk about inspiration, where we find inspiration. And this week, our topic is gratitude. Gratitude. The attitude of gratitude. So gratitude is positively associated according to both Harvard and Forbes studies uh, with all sorts of great things from happiness to better sleep. And even uh, with it positively correlates to physical health. Wow. wow. Well, certainly if you are grateful mm -hmm. that your body is able to get out of bed and go do things, you're going to be more inclined to exercise and. Yeah, things. I get, yes, I get that. Right. So I think gratitude at its, at its core is reflective. And I think being reflective is something that maybe at least I don't do all the time. I'm always, I'm frequently thinking about what's coming up, what's next planning, etc., and being in a state of reflection can be good. I don't know. What do you think, dear? Um, last week we talked about meditation. Right. And mm -hmm. I find that when I'm practicing meditation, I help focus and center myself by starting with gratitude mm -hmm. and thankfulness. And that certainly puts my headspace in a better place to, to relax and focus on the meditation. Mm hmm when things are particularly tough mm -hmm. and feeling kind of hopeless or stressed mm -hmm. out about things, making a gratitude list is a sure way to come back to reality mm -hmm. and realize things aren't all lost because there's a lot I could still lose. And I do not want to ever take that for granted. Absolutely. I, I totally get that. I also like to sometimes make a, a, a list of things that I'm grateful for that I overlook like uh, I have a really nice pair of shoes that I love. And when I put that pair of shoes on, I'm grateful for them. Anything like that that you got? Usually it's around physical activity. Okay. I mm -hmm. love it when I can 
take on a challenge like hiking in Sedona this past summer when mm-hmm. it was really hot and mm-hmm. we got to the highest peak that we wanted to get to mm-hmm. just because we wanted to. Sure. And I yeah. was so grateful that I could withstand the heat and the mm-hmm. the terrain and do that simply because I wanted to. Yep. I always like to make sure that I'm grateful for a good running vehicle. That's a really big oh, deal. Yeah. If you've ever experienced car troubles, you know how important a good vehicle can be. Yep, that's a good one. And then... I'm always grateful for the people that I work with or encounter every day who make life Mm -hmm. happen Mm -hmm. and try to tell them I am appreciative of them. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good... We we all we should all say thank you and you're welcome, mm-hmm. but really expressing our gratitude for their efforts, even if it's just the normal day to day. The fact that we all show up for each other should be recognized. Yep, yep, totally agree. Lately, I have been sending out handwritten thank you cards. Thank you. Not just that people love it. Just yeah, I mean, I think so. I think so. Uh, I've gotten positive feedback from it. Just. Trying to let people know that I think about them and that I appreciate them. And I do believe that you know, doing that puts my head in a better space to be of service and to just have a, another good day. And, you know, what is a good life but a bunch of good days put together? Well, I'm proud of you for actually following through with those things and remembering to put stamps on envelopes and putting them in the mail. Put them like, yes. Sometimes that is the most challenging part mm-hmm. of my day is trying to get something in the actual snail mail. Yeah. It takes some, <laughs> takes some persistence. <laughs> All right. Uh, so how about you guys? What are you doing to, to keep the attitude of gratitude? Where does it come from in your life? We would like to know. We would like to know. That's beautiful. Thank you. bonus segment Mm -hmm, we're going to talk about things that we're either reading or listening to that inspire us Mm -hmm. that's what what we're listening to reading yeah so watching for me sometimes it's reading but frequently it's listening to especially these days and for me what's been inspiring me lately has been bach johan s bach Johann Sebastian Bach. That's the one I'm talking about. Did I say Johann? JSB. Yay, JSB. I do, I have been enjoying his music lately. There's a lot of emotion in his music. And and for the longest time, I thought that uh, Baroque period classical music was sort of staunch and stilted. And as I get more and more into it and listen to the interpretations of different artists on these pieces, it just... It just makes me happy. So that's where I'm at. What about you? What about you, dear? Can I get in? Yes, okay. you can get in there. I love audiobooks. Woo! Mm-hmm. Allows me to, quote, read. Mm-hmm. Doing the air quotes here. Read books when I'm on the road. You all know what audiobooks are. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Pema Chodron's when things fall apart yep. has been a huge inspiration for me lately, mm-hmm. uh, finding, uh, through meditation and through daily life, how to recognize when things are over, they're done. Things die. Yep. Yep. Everything, things die. everything yep. dies yep. moment to moment. We're, we're different mm-hmm. in our own bodies experiences end, um, and mm-hmm. just learning to let go mm-hmm. and be ready for the next new thing. Mm. Yes. It's been a big lesson for me. So yep. that's what I've, that has been inspiring yep. everything I do lately. After death, there is rebirth, right? That's right. Love it. How about you folks? What do you got? Let us know. Give us a call at 512-522-7097. We have it memorized, people. That's official. <laughs> And by the way, I'm grateful for you. Uh, I'm grateful for you too, sweetheart. Thank you. (laughs) That was a nice way to end the podcast. Over and out. All right. Thanks for joining us. I'm Suzanne. And I'm Greg. 
We look forward to spending more time with you next week. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. One of us likes to call it that. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) That's me. That was disparaging. I apologize. That's all right. Words and music, words and music, words and music, yeah.